Welcome to Jewish Boy Calls His Mother. I am your host, Sadia, and this is my mother, Ima. Hey, Ima. Hello. How you doing, <laughs> my sweetness? Yeah, I could be better, but I'm, I'm, I'm moving forward. Um, don't worry. Don't worry, honey. Life gets worse. It just and does if you think there's a, And if you think there's a light at the end of the tunnel, forget it. Because with each stage of my life, I kept thinking to myself, like in, in kindergarten, oh, when I get older in elementary school, it's going to be easier. Then after elementary school, oh, junior high is going to be easier. No. High school is going to be easier. No. College is going to be easier. No. Ah, oh, when I'm all finished with college and I'm working and I'm making money and I'm getting married, oh, boy, it'll be easier. What can be hard about raising a family? No. <laughs> and now that um, I'm in my uh, senior years, I'm wondering when's it going to get easier and i realized the other day it never does i mean you should have it the easiest right now i mean i would think retired isn't that like the dream everyone has that they want to be able to like retire so to speak i'm not retired i'm working full time now uh, and, I enjoy, and i and i enjoy it very much wonderful wonderful um uh, okay so this week's topic um it's a mixture of things I wanted to talk about aliens, but I realized, or, or supernatural things, but I realized we don't really have that much topics. Wait a second. What about that story about um, Tati's sister who's, who saw um, that guy in the, t- uh, in the TV when the TV was off? Your, your father is one of these people who's, um, he's, he w- is actually was, excuse me. Yeah. I'm sorry. I keep forgetting that he's dead. I know, right? Uh, <laughs> Maybe his ghost lives on. I don't know. But anyway, he was into ghosts and space aliens and things like that. And um, what happened was his uh, sister was um, uh, had a boyfriend who died very tragically, very young, that um, they found him on the grounds of, uh, you know, Community College of Baltimore City um, dead. And they found evidently he, what happened was, he had been eating and somebody stole his tennis racket and was running with it. So without thinking, he jumped up to chase the guy who stole his tennis racket and he choked and died on the piece of food that he was eating. So um, uh, there's an idea about, I was listening once to about a program. I was listening once to a program about ghosts and supernatural phenomena. And they said that when somebody dies very tragically and like uh, at a young age like they have unfinished business that when a spirit has unfinished business they try to communicate with uh, the family and friends of those who are you know living after them and um my your father heard uh, his sister after this middle gentleman passed away like screaming in the um, television room in their house and so she ran upstairs and she said that she was watching the TV and all of a sudden she thought she saw his face appear on the screen and he told her how he had died. And so your father went downstairs and he said he didn't see anything. But um, your father was one uh, was a very firm believer that he felt that um, there were definitely that when people die very suddenly like that and have unfinished business, he believed in that, that... Um, they do try to communicate. Well, uh, I mean, as far a- as as far as like now supernatural phenomena, I had um, the only I had uh, one interesting incident that happened to me, uh, where when I was living in Crown Heights, I was going to Machon Khana and I was living in the dormitory of Machon Khana. Um, the night before Friday night, I was by a friend's house. And of course, I was single, and I was one of the older single girls at the time. So the um, host of where I was having Friday night Shabbos meal, it was, uh, it was Shabbos Mavorachim. And for some reason, he just blurted out in the middle of the meal, hey, any single girl that says the entire Tehillim, this Shabbos, will get married very shortly. And he just, for no reason, we weren't even discussing this again? marriage. This was the fa- the host. This was the you know the husband of the family where I was uh, having Friday night Shabbos meal. Okay. And he all of a sudden said that just yep, you know, just like that. So I thought, hey, you know, um, you know, it's worth a shot. So I decided I was going to spend that Shabbos saying the entire Tehillim. 
And I was all alone in the dormitory. Nobody else was there. And I hear a knock at the door. And I was like, I think halfway through the Tehillim. And I go and answer the door. And there's these ladies. These, um, they're by, I would say, middle-aged to make, they looked like they were like in their 60s. And these two ladies were standing there with these huge smiles on their faces. And I came to them, I opened it up and they go, oh, I, was, I had the book of Tehillim. I was holding it. And they go, oh, you're saying Tehillim. And I said, yes. And they said, and they sm- looked at each other's father and said, we said ours a long time ago. And then both of them said together, may your tefillahs be answered. And I said, amen. And they smiled. And before I knew it, they, it's almost like they, I'll tell you the truth, they disappeared. It was wow. uncanny. It wasn't like I saw them go down the steps, walk away. They're like, boof. Like all of a sudden they just weren't there. And I often thought, I'm wondering if, you know, the, these were Malachim, because shortly after that was when um, I did meet your father. And um, of course, then we got married. Oh, wow. so it, like, it was like within the year. That's really cool. I, I mean, I was going to tell you the story about how I pranked uh, one of my friends from camp. About, oh, I hear this. Because this one. I, love, I like pranks. Okay, I played so the, a few of them myself. So uh, for the <laughs> listeners wondering, um, the, the term is shadim. A shade is the single term. Shadim is plural. Uh, it's a, a spirit that's unrested that usually possesses animals or sometimes even people because it can't go. It, it can't be able to uh, fulfill. Is, that's a dibek. Well, you're shade. Getting sh- you're getting a shade oh, mixed yeah, up with I the dibek. Oh yeah. yeah. The dibek is the one. Dibek is is the, the one that yeah, that the possesses. Sh- the shade shade is evil. Shade, shade is, is pure, evil. pure evil. Yeah. Pure evil. Okay. Okay. And yeah, that lives in the lives in the forest and whatnot. So, um, basically, there uh, there was there was a time that like me and my friends in we were in camp, and we were talking about you know spooky stories and freaking ourselves out, <laughs> and then at the end at like midnight actually, we heard this like howling, the howling and then laughter. Um, so we were all like, Ooh, there could be shade in here. Uh, so, so one of the guys really didn't like it and thought it was not funny. Um, so we decided to go ahead and play a prank where we tried to pretend as if like shade and really are coming in and one of us gets possessed <laughs> and, and he's like trying to sleep and like, I'm just lying there in bed and I go, Ugh. and then he's like, what the fuck is it? What's going on? And then. We like all like get like really quiet, and then we can like continue like. <laughs> and like we just kept on. Like, we did it. We did it slowly but surely. Like, and the thing is, the rest of the camp caught on that he was very paranoid about Shadem. So everyone else like joined along where they started talking about Shadem and things <laughs> like that, and and it, it got really bad. Uh, in, in the end, I think he was okay. I don't know, but um. But like it was, oh god, it got it got it got so bad. It got so bad where the, where the the head counselor of the camp was talking about Shadim and had to be careful and just try just just to mess with this one kid. Like the head <laughs> the head counselor himself was very like weirdly weirdly specific. Where like he made fun of kids, he would, like rip on them, he like had problems with me. Like it was really <laughs> weird. But um, yeah, I definitely definitely pulled some pranks with that. But we uh, me and my friends though. We definitely, my my other friends in in in, in Baltimore, we we did stuff with uh, EVP. Um, I, I think it stands for electro, electrical something pulse, where you you're able to pick up on. It supposedly you're supposed to be able to pick up on ghosts, but like, we, is we, that what that was from the movie? Um, it was after I remember when you get when you did that. It was after we had seen the movie White Noise. Yes, it was white noise. And so you and your friends decided to actually do that on the computer. Yeah. I remember we, the story. That is a weird story. Go tell it. Yeah, tell yeah the story. so no, so we we found we found some voices and some responses to our questions. Um, and there's some parts of Maryland that are supposed to be super haunted. Uh, and that we went there and that oh, we tell were me, able- tell me about your friend. Remember the friend asked his grand about his he wanted to communicate with his grand his deceased grandfather it, well it was actually it was it, it, uh-huh. it wasn't he was trying to so one, one of my friend's mothers passed away when he was in 11th grade uh-huh. and then a couple of years later um that my, my other friend um 
wanted to like see see if the, he could con he he could contact you know the dead see if he can, he can and he basically like called her out by name and tried to like ask different questions and whatnot and he got responses that seemed like he he was like pretty like shocked that he got pretty good verbal responses and he even went to my other friend and told him about it and my other friend was like please don't ever do that ever again just let it be but do you remember the one about the red car i think it was the grandfather one of your friends tried to communicate with his grandfather and they were you told me that they were listening to the sounds that were coming over the computer and you said to your friend it sounds like somebody is saying about the red car it's okay and that your friend almost like totally freaked out because evidently he had wrecked his grandfather's red car and the grandfather was very angry at him about it like years ago yeah i think i think so i i i, I don't know I, i've been getting more forgetful lately but yeah no it's i had i had stories like that um and it, and it's it's very interesting where it's like people people are always saying that like you know but when you go when you go to Israel, there is Makubalis who can like read you. Mm-hmm. Um, one guy I read me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, one guy read me, and he like he told me certain things about myself. Like I I I don't remember now, but I remember feeling like you're right, but I hate you for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, um, the Rebbe was able to do that. The oh, Rebbe's yeah. um, oh, it was unbelievable. The the uh, I I I've, I've never told you about the incident. I don't know if we've discussed it on the podcast about the vestibule that was between the Viber show and the Rebbe's office. No. Okay. I was in 770 one Friday night and one of the girls said to me, Hey, you know, there's, if you come, there's a small hallway outside. She showed me a door to the side of the Viber show. And she says, if we open up the door and we stand right there in like just, the, just at the, at the doorway, the Rebbe's office is right down this hall and you can see the Rebbe come out of his office and go into 770. So she asked some of the girls, Hey, you want to, you want to do that? So we said, yeah, of course we wanted to see the Rebbe. So we uh, opened up the door and we stood there in the doorway. The Rebbe comes out of his office. And when he came out of his office, he of course was in a rush to get to the shul. So he didn't turn and look at us or anything. You know, he came right out of his office and he had his back towards us and he was heading towards the show. And I thought to myself, mm, too busy to even turn around. And when I thought that he stopped and oh, wow. he turned around and he looked right at me and the girls and he smiled and, and nodded. And I think he, I think he whispered like a good Shabbos and then turned to, then turned around and went into the show. But I was like, Oh my gosh. Like he, at the, at, like, like I said, he like he read my mind. Oh my gosh! I don't. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't also like go ahead and 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 double down on your story. But uh, they say that when the rabbi pays attention to you, it's not always a good thing. Ah, <laughs> I heard just the opposite. <laughs> sure, whatever helps you sleep at night. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! So now we wanted to go on to another topic: social faux pas. Yeah, social faux pas and foot and mouth disease. Yes, foot and mouth disease. <laughs> Yes. We've all had those moments where we wish we should have said nothing or something or whatnot, or like, <laughs> I don't know. I can't, I can't think of anything right now. Socially awkward moments. I, I know you have a few you want to talk about. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, let me begin. I'll begin with the incident with the vodka. <laughs> oh, sure. Okay. Okay. We had a lady in our show who is a black Gioris mm-hmm. and we had a sim club. At the Simcha, I noticed on the table there was Kalua. And then I noticed she was holding a bottle of vodka. Now, Kalua and vodka combined make a drink called a Black Russian. So without thinking, I looked at her holding the vodka and I said, oh, a Black Russian. And she glared at me. And I went, um... Um, I go, and I tried to explain to her that uh, Kalua and vodka make a drink called a Black Russian. And she glared at me. And it was one of these situations where the more I tried to explain myself, the deeper hole I was digging. Oh, gosh. 
Uh, I, I like the funeral story you told. You told. Yeah. Was it, was it was a funeral or was it just it was just oh but no it was she more was of like the poor lady was dying. It was a hospice story. Oh, hospice story. That's what it was. Yeah. Good times. Okay, this. <laughs> <laughs> this another this friend of mine many many years ago was uh, dying of cancer, and so she was home at this point, and friends and family were coming basically to to visit her and talk to her a little bit to spend some time with her for what would probably be the last time. So I decided her um, she had two visitors there. One was her father. Her father her mother had died a number of years ago. And her father remarried, so her father and his wife, his her stepmother, were there in the room, sitting, in, you know, sitting around, sitting with her. And I decided to bring a Tanya with me, and to learn Tanya with her. So I was learning Tanya, and it came into the idea of uh, Alter Rebbe explaining Chachma Bina and Das, and I explained, you know, how Bina is understanding, and I said, you know, women have an extra amount of Bina. They have more understanding than men. And so her, her father's wife chimes out, oh yes, everybody knows that when a woman dies, more men are apt to remarry quickly than women who lose their husbands. Oh God. <laughs> oh God. I came home and I said to your father, how refreshing it is to meet somebody who can put their foot in their mouth better than I can. Oh, God, that was good. Uh, then you have one last one, and then we'll close up shop. Oh, yeah, your aunt. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, many, many years ago, your, uh, when your aunt was dating her uh, later-to-be ex, <laughs> her first husband, um, her, her ex had an aunt who was middle-aged and never married. Well, when we were single girls in our teens, uh, late teens, early 20s, there was a joke where if you were sitting at a table with a group of people eating a meal and there was one item that was left on the serving plate, like a, a last piece of cake, a last cookie, uh, one last piece of chicken, that the single girls were, would, it was like an old wives tale or a, I don't know, a joke or whatever, folklore. The single girls would chime out, Okay, who's going to be the old maid? It's because the idea was that the last single girl to pick up that last piece of food was going to be an old maid. So we used to do this all the time in my house when there was one last food with me and my sisters. It was, hey, who's going to be the old maid? You know, we used to joke around about that all the time. So uh, they were having some sort of meal at, uh, uh, your, at um, your aunt's uh, ex's uh, house, and his whole family was there, including this aunt this uh, middle-aged, never-married bachelorette. And there was one piece of kugel left on the plate. And Aunt Dan, without thinking, starts, okay, who's going to be the old... But she, all of a sudden, she caught herself in the middle of saying, oh, gosh, that's awesome. Oh, uh, that was good. I'll go on. So sure you've had some funny social. Posts. I I had social faux pas. I just can't remember. Oh, mm -hmm. probably a dating. Your dating year, uh, dating. Dating years. Uh, teachers, rabbis. Um, people oh, trying to. Oh, impress. I had the faux pas when I was a kid, calling the rabbi rabbi like Emo or Tati. <laughs> I had those problems. I, I'm pretty sure most people have had the, that that mix up. It that that awkward like childhood like. Asked, calling the 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 teacher or the rabbi like, oh no, I had a I had a faux pas, but it was a weird faux pas. So I grew up in a very yeshivish environment, but I grew up Lubavitch, and this is this is going to be some real meta Jewish stuff. So if you're not if you're not sure of what we're what we're talking about, bear with me, or you could send us a message on Facebook. Can okay, you we'll, translate? I'll translate best as I can. Don't translate. Okay. So uh, I. It's basically different cultures. Um, I grew up in one culture, but I was raised in another. Culture A and culture B. Culture A is yeshivish. Culture B is Lubavitch. So I grew up in in yeshiva, and in yeshiva you call your your rabbi that teaches you Rebbe. You always just call them Rebbe. In Lubavitch, you don't call them Re Rebbe. You call them Rabbi, and you only call only the the head rabbi, the Lubavitch Rebbe, was ever called Rebbe. Everyone else is called rabbi. 
and Rabbi so-and-so. You call them by their last name. So I was in school in Israel, in Labab Yeshiva, studying, and I said, Rebbe, what is blah, blah, blah? And everyone started laughing, and I was like, what's so funny? And then the rabbi explained to me that actually in Lubavitch custom, we don't, we don't do that. We, don't, we call them, we, we call them, we call, we call, we call them rabbi, not Rebbe. And I had no idea. And that was like one social faux pas I can say that definitely stands out to me now. That was always very weird. Um, that's, that's probably because as far as we're concerned, there's only one Rebbe. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. But it's, but it's not, but it's, I think also in a way it, 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 it keeps up with, you know, um, I guess keeping the rabbi humble. I think, <laughs> I think, I think I've seen in Lubavitch, the rabbis there are more, it's a, I, I don't know. I don't think, I don't think that's true. Never mind. I take that back. <laughs> but, um, I was, I said, no, wait a second. I, I, I've, I've heard other people say the same thing in general that, um, they have found that in, uh, that in certain like non Hasidic groups that there seems to be more of a tendency for, um, it seems to be more of a tendency for egotism. Yeah. It, 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 it's a because type because of ego. because it's a because type you of don't ego. because you know what it is what it is is that uh, by Hasidim you have a rebbe who's in charge of the group and you feel you know like who are you compared to him so there's there's uh, it's automatically a feeling of humility right there whereas in groups that don't have a rebbe there's no real like a, how can I say it? not authority but there's no real like authoritarian figure over them that would make them. Feel feel more humble uh, yes and no i think it also has to deal with what what you're what you strive for you, you can't strive to become the rebbe the rebbe is, is more of a hereditary situation and you know your best bet is to be a rabbi but if you're in the yeshivish world anybody become, can become a huge rebbe you know there's always that possibility so people always have that in, the, in their back pocket that they're that there's a possibility that they can have this this possibility of being a Talmud Chacham. But I think in Kassidus, there's this feeling that like really isn't. It's more of like I try to be, but I, but the chances of actually becoming one is is very slim. There's a level of there there it, it it is humility, but it's not it's not the way you think of it. Like it's it's a lot more complicated, and and we're gonna have to have a whole new whole total new episode if we're talking about humility and egotism, e <laughs> being egotistical, and what ego really is. And we'll save that for later, maybe. Home, we'll save save it for next uh, episode. Let me write this down. So, yeah, um, yeah. So that's really something that we we can discuss later on. But yeah, that's that's a whole different story. Um, so it's, okay. So who's doing the cook in the shop? Is by you? <laughs> oh, um, uh, well, I'll, I'll do it. It's fine. <laughs> Good for you. Good for you. <laughs> yeah. God, that'll make you humble having to do the cooking for Shabbos. I always do the cooking for Shabbos. <laughs> that's, right? good. that's good. That's good. I, I, it's, yeah. Um, I know your brothers and sisters that live in New York, they just go, they just go down to the local uh, kosher sushi restaurant and get a bunch of sushi. <laughs> well, that's actually, it's actually not that bad, but you normally do that. It's just that right now we're both pretty busy. Thank God. So. Actually, it's interesting. I've spoken to some people who, um, they said that actually to get like their Shabbos meal all cooked and prepared, it's not that much more expensive than cooking it themselves. A lot of yeah. people that are, you know, a lot of people that are single and work and work full time will do that. Yeah. And it's sometimes it's even cheaper too. It, yeah. it, it, if, if it's plays a car, right. Okay. All right. So that was the episode. Thank you so much, everybody for listening questions, comments, you know, you know how to reach us. All right. Take care. Okay, Love you, honey. Have a good Shabbos. Mwah. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Jewish Boy Calls His Mother. Please like and share and find us on Facebook at Jewish Boy Calls His Mother podcast. We are looking forward to hearing from you.